Let me paint a familiar picture. You're kicking off a brand new project, and it's up to you to build a solid infrastructure as code configuration from scratch using, obviously, OpenTOFU. Uh, as a developer who values good practices, you likely have some specific requirements when it comes to managing your infrastructure as code. So you need multiple environments, right? Dev, integration, production, and a reliable promotion pipeline to ensure that code deployed to production was tested in previous stages. Uh, you want to keep those environments isolated, so nothing from development leaks into production, obviously. Um, and of course, you want a single code base configured with the right variables for each environment. You'll need flexibility to enable environment-specific features when necessary, but you want to avoid uh, duplicating duplicating code as much as possible. Uh, that's where the dry principle comes in. Don't repeat yourself. Keep your code clean and maintainable. I've been in your shoes. Uh, I've wrestled with keeping my infrastructure clean and scalable across different environments. Uh, I'm Ronnie, part of the Open Tofu core team. I'm a software engineer at N of Zero, and I'm here today to share three and a half recipes to spice up your Open Tofu configuration. We don't have much time, so let's get cooking. Um, our first recipe utilizes the inherent workspaces feature of Open Tofu. Let's start by looking at the instructions right at the left there. Uh, we can see that Open Tofu supports workspace command to whip up new workspaces and select existing ones. Uh, moving to the ingredient section, uh, we see we have a single instance of our configuration, ensuring there is no duplication. And additionally, there in the little window, uh, we have a straightforward method to manage our environment-specific features and configurations using workspace, workspace interpolation, as shown in the example. After savoring the many delicious benefits of the workspaces approach, let's take a moment to digest the downsides. Uh, the main issue with this method is that all our different envir environment states are stored in a single backend. It limits the isolation between the state files. Uh, it can pose a challenge when we're managing separate cloud accounts for each environment, so we cannot run them with distinct credential that correspond to the relevant cloud accounts. So in my taste test, I'll give this recipe a rating of 5 out of 10. It's very useful for supporting multiple de development environments or ephemeral env environments. Um, but when it comes to heavy cooking and managing distinct, envi distinct environments like development and production, it tends to fall flat like a souffle. Uh, let's ex explore what else we have in stock with our second recipe. Uh, the instructions for re this recipe are very simple. You just need to go to the right directory of, of the environment and run Tofu Plan and Tofu Apply. Um, however, when we look at the ingredients, we notice that there are duplicated configuration for each environment. Uh, both the development and production environments are utilizing a shared model, the networking model there, uh, but each one receives different parameters. Uh, each environment can also include its own uh, auto.tfvar file, making it really easy to set different configurations for each environment. Well, while this recipe really results in a visually clear solution with effective modularization, its major drawback is that it requires st strict discipline in the kitchen. It's tempting to add resources straight to the duplicated configuration, which can lead to the risk of configuration drift when the code diverges between the different environments. As the number of environments grow, uh, managing these duplicates become increasingly harder, especially if you're, if you're scaling just beyond a few environments. Um, so my score for the taste test is 7 out of 10. It's suitable for a small project or those that require extensive customization uh, across different environments. However, I do not recommend it for big projects that involve uh, a lot of chefs and contributors. Um, and it's really important to mention here Terragrant, and it's really in simplifying this approach. I won't go into detail. Um, it's not within the scope of the talk but you should definitely check it out. Uh, the next recipe involves blending the backend configuration into the cooking instructions. So first, we start by running the command tofu in it to prepare the kitchen and initialize our environment with the right backend. Once everything is set, we run tofu apply to deploy the infrastructure. The ingredients for this recipe are quite similar to the, those of the workspace recipe, uh, featuring a single set of 
configuration. However, we, we face a challenge when attempting to use different uh, variables for each environment. To achieve this, we need to pass additional parameter to the tofu apply uh, command, and we, if we accidentally mix up the wrong uh, backend configuration with incorrect set of variables, it could lead to a hot mess in our deployed configuration. Setting aside the risks of misconfiguration, uh, this recipe allows us to isolate our states successfully while keep a, keeping a single instance of without duplicates. Uh, so I give it an eight out of 10, and I recommend it for a project that runs their open tofu as part of an automation, uh, maybe as part of a CD or a tacos. Uh, if your team runs open tofu locally, this can be a recipe for disaster. Um, and we have the final recipe. It comes from the chefs of the Open Tofu team, and it has been requested for many years but by thousands of people. Uh, this recipe closely resembles the previous one, but with a delightful twist. Thanks to the early evaluation feature in Open Tofu 1.8, the backend block can now accept variables and locals. Uh, instead of injecting backend configuration directly into the Tofu command, uh, now we can simply run uh, the tofu init and tofu apply and add the appropriate variable that indicates our environment. Uh, as the provider example demonstrate, the configuration will utilize the correct bucket uh, based on the specified variable. Um, yeah, and the change in this approach diminishes the risk of misconfiguration and makes feature management easy as pie. So after personally waiting for this feature to arrive as patiently as one would wait for dough, uh, I can confidently give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, and yeah, let's, let's just look at quick, let's take a quick peek at our test day scores. Uh, the Workspaces recipe receives a score of five out of 10. Uh, the recipe number two, directories with shared model, receives seven out of 10. Uh, injecting backend configuration, is eight out of 10. And my favorite, backend config with variables, receive a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, and now you're armed with the recipes, each with its own strength. Go ahead and experiment, try a configuration, taste test it, and remember, you can always adjust or mix and match flavors and different recipes, by the way, uh, to get exactly what you need. With the right recipe, your infrastructure can be a masterpiece. Choose your flavor and get cooking with open tofu. Thank you. Okay, it was quicker than I expected. So, do you have any questions? We have like three minutes, apparently. Oh no, yeah. Hi, so this was great. Uh, I do have a couple questions about having a backend config with variables. So let's say hypothetically I'm on a platform team and we do backend injection, uh, kind of what you demonstrated, which you gave it, I think an eight out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, for variables, one of the things that we run into is that teams, we inject it for them, but from like a local perspective, they have no clue where their backend lives. Um, and that's something that we actually handle for them. Could VARs be potentially a way to mitigate that if they're testing things locally? I think so. Um, I'm also like, before we had this feature, I was also injecting the backend uh -huh. configuration into the, into the command line and I like. I think it's when I used to look at like I, as part of this talk, I went and I, I looked at our configurations and like you really don't see a backend block. You have like the backend block, but it's empty, yeah. and you don't understand what <laughs> happens behind the scenes. And as you say, you don't really understand what's going on there. So yeah, I definitely agree with you that if we're using variables, we have the backend block. You you have all the logic. Like it's not a hidden logic that just the one who knows how to run open tofu knows exactly how it works. You see it, it's there, new developers that start working on your project, they can see it and understand exactly how it works. So yeah, I think it's much, it's way visual than previous approaches. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, I am curious what your opinion is on using uh, remote uh, workspaces similar to using like uh, TerraCube or Terraform Cloud 
You didn't mention anything like that. You, you're using S3 as a remote state um, endpoint, but I'm curious if you have an experience using other tools and what your opinion is. Are you talking about remote states, like storing the state remotely? Right, in lieu of purely just doing kind of a, a local state and switching between them, yeah. Can you repeat the last part? Sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, I was saying yes. Instead of using a local state, using a mm -hmm. remote state with a hosted provider such as TerraCube or Terraform Cloud. Yeah. Um, so I work in N0, and we also have a feature of remote backend. And I like it's obviously a best practice to use a remote backend and not use like run the commands locally because you want your backend stored somewhere else. You want it to be, uh, when you run, you want some kind of locking mechanism to ensure that problems won't happen. And I really think that, like, personally, if as long, I, I believe that as long as your backend is not stored locally, uh, then you're all set. If you want to use any other feature, if it makes your life easier, do that. But, like, it's really up to you. Okay, thank you. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you.